Hi, and welcome to the August 2023 single family residential detached real estate market update for Nanaimo, British Columbia. Let's get right into it. On the supply side of the equation, units listed for 2023 when compared to 2022, month over month, we're down 23%. Year over year, we're down 15%. The active listings presently are at 286. This time last year, we were at 352. So supply in 2023 is lower than in 2022. On a weekly basis, which we track as part of our weekly newsletter, you'll know that this week we have 35 active listings, which is a little bit below the weekly average of about 42 that we've been seeing. On the demand side of the coin, total sales volume, so the total, do total dollar volume of all sales in single family detached Nanaimo, month over month, we're up 31%. This is why you have to be careful when you hear people reporting the month over month stats. They provide some value but they can also mislead you. Year to date, sales volume is actually down 33%. So it's the opposite of the month over month. Big, big statistical gap there. Also present in unit sales. So we compare the unit sales of July 2022 with July 2023, we're up 38%. But if we look at the year to date, we're actually down 27%. The reason why we're seeing this gap is because if you think about it, July of 2022 was right when the market took a shift for the worse and we saw a reduction in trading volume. So when we compare the month over month stats, we can get some really skewed numbers. So please be careful when you're watching stats out there. If you don't know whether it's month over month or year over year, put a big asterisk next to it. Until you know that, you really can't decide whether it's useful intelligence or not. Talking days on market or time to sell, how long is it taking homes to sell in 2023? Well, month over month, we're up 6% from 30 days to 32 days. But again, year over year, we're up 105%. Homes were taking on average this time last year, 18 days to sell. Now they're taking on average 37 days. That's a pretty normal average right around that 30, 45 day mark. What impact is this supply and demand having on the overall market? What, what impacts it's having on prices? Okay, average prices month over month are down about 5%. So July 2023 homes were selling on average 5% less than 2022. Year over year, we're down a little more dramatically closer to 9%. This is consistent with the general notion in the marketplace that prices were down about 10% about three months ago. But we've gained some of those losses back with this increase in trading volume. That increase in trading volume, in my mind, has been spurred by the predictions of increased rates and you have anyone that's in a rate hold scrambling to secure a property before those rate holds expire and rates increase. On that note, the median price is now sitting at $790,000. Our average price is ranging between $814,000 and $834,000 depending what time frame you're looking at. So pretty consistent averages in that $790 to $835 for an average single family detached home in Nanaimo, British Columbia. What does this mean for sellers? Well, for sellers, what I'm saying is make a plan. You need a plan, and that plan needs to be based on reality so that you can make a decision. By reality, I mean all the inputs that you're putting into the formula that's going to guide your decision. If one of those numbers is wrong, like the forecasted sale price of your home or what you're likely to buy your next home for, or how long it's going to take, or any of the variables, if they're based on assumptions that are flawed or inaccurate, your plan's just not gonna work. So make a plan, base it on reality so that you can make a decision. As you work through that plan, these numbers change over time, so you need to stay up to date on trends to avoid mistakes. You're going to wanna watch like weekly stats, like we report, monthly stats at a minimum, or at least a relationship with an agent you trust that you can check in with as we work through the plan to know that the numbers that we used when we made the plan are still relevant as we work through the plan. And with that end, you know if you're not liking what the current market is 
posing you as a seller and you want to wait until you can get numbers like what we were seeing a year ago, that uh, you need to be prepared to be very patient. No one can tell us when we're going to re-hit the peaks that we had in 2022. My hunch is that it's going to be a while before we hit those peaks again. So if, you're, if your plan is silent on time and it's much more important about the number, that's fine and that's totally normal, but you're going to have to be quite patient in that scenario. So make sure when you go through that plan that the fact that it could take three, four, five years doesn't mess up your plan. Well, for buyers, what this means is your, the money side of the coin has never been more important. Make sure you're working with a qualified lender. Shop around if you need to to make sure that you are getting the best offer possible from the lenders. And you know what they say, marry the house and date the rate. And what we're saying there is that you know if, if, if you find the dream house that's going to meet your needs for the long term and you're going to be able to afford it for the long term, then if you need to take on potentially a not so great rate to get your dream property, we can adjust the mortgage later. So marry the house, date the rate. Go into the house ideally for with long-term perspective. And as long as you're in control of the, t- of the exit timing, which is to say you're never going to be financially push to have to sell because you can no longer afford your payments. That's how you lose money in real estate. But if you make sure that no matter what happens on the on these on the affordability side, we're going to be able to make our payments so that we can determine when we exit this property, not the market, then you are going to be in a position of success. And the last point I'm going to give you on the buy side, hire top talent. I see this on the negotiating side, on the listing side. The the agents that know what they're doing on the buy side will dramatically outperform those with less experience. So they're all making the same rate. So make sure that you are hiring the top talent in whatever community you live in. Talk to you soon.